It is absolutely no surprise that many patients who require TAVR also have ischemic heart disease. When that happens to be left main disease, it gets more complicated, shall we say. There is a, uh, an interesting paper and accompanying editorial comment that is coming up, and this whole topic is part of the March 1st issue of Jack. Well, the accompanying editorial is this. Can two giants live in harmony in a small room? And the paper uh, that we're discussing uh, originally started with Dr. Raj Makar, who is an MD and the Director of Interventional Cardiology and Cardiac Catheterization Lab at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles and a professor of medicine at UCLA. Now, you've got, this paper is about the TAVR LM registry. I didn't even know there was a TAVR LM registry, but it's actually, it's for you. I mean, you created this thing, right? That is correct. Uh, you know, when we first started to do these cases at our center, we thought it would be interesting to take patients who have had both TAVR procedure and left main stenting and, and study their outcomes. And this is what basically led us to established this registry and enrolled 204 patients uh, at 11 different centers in North America as well as in Europe. And what we did was we took patients um, uh, who had this procedure either in a planned fashion, which is a planned fashion uh, stenting of the left main or unplanned fashion, you know, um, or had a stent procedure after their TAVR was done and analyzed their outcomes. Going back just a little bit to the origination of TAVR, there was a lot of concern in those early days that if you did TAVR, what does that mean down the line when you do some other procedure? All of those concerns really didn't pan out, did they? Sure. So I think one of the concerns early on was, uh, are we going to be able to access coronary arteries after we put this metal cage, you know, right. you know, which is what TAVR is, with a valve inside it. And of course, I think today, dealing with coronary obstructions, uh, going through this metal cage is almost a non-issue. I'm not going to say almost a non-issue, but it's not a major issue, at least right. with most of these stent designs. Designs. There are certain uh, valves where, where it may be somewhat difficult to, but those are theoretical concerns. So this is done routinely now. But I think the important thing with left main coronary artery stenosis is the proximity, because you're going to put right. a big stent in the aortic root, and then in the left main ostium is very close to the aortic root, and of course there is this fear of device interaction between the two stents. So how would that pan out? And there is this concern about having two diseases which are critical in terms of compromising the hemodynamics. So their coexistence, what do you do first, how do you do this, can you do this procedure safely, those were some of the issues that we actually wanted to study. So can two giants live in a small room? Well, I think our data suggests that not only can they live in the same room, or <laughs> I, but I think they can uh, even thrive, as are the outcomes. Uh, granted that these are not prospective, randomized, right. uh, you know, um, um, outcomes. But nonetheless, I think in a registry of about 200 patients, uh, we do a matched comparison with patients who had TAVI alone, and we demonstrate that both 30-day outcomes, as well as uh, one-year outcomes, are actually quite acceptable, and they're very similar to TAVR alone. So I'm inclined to say that this is a good first step and uh, basically something that can uh, give some information to the referring doctors so that you know, patients that have coexisting left main aortic stenosis should not be automatically excluded from percutaneous treatment. In the accompanying editorial, they write that your work adds considerably to current knowledge about the feasibility and the safety of TAVR and left main PCI thus uh, overcoming many of the outdated preconceptions. But no one should consider the presence of left main disease as a minor issue I in TAVR. I absolutely agree. I think that uh, one should not minimize this, and one should be very methodical. I think it's very important to actually undertake proper workup of these patients. So I think technically planning this procedure well is a very important thing. Indeed, what we show in our study is that when you had unplanned left main PCI, the mortality was high. So unplanned left main PCI was done for threatened 
or actual closure of the left main coronary artery. So those patients have completely different outcomes. But in, even in that subset of patients, when we planned well and we preemptively had uh, coronary protection in place, those patients did much better than patients who did not have coronary protection in place, which is having a guide wire. So if you need to, you can quickly put a stent in. Uh, was a very important thing. So I think that nobody should take away from this study uh, that this is uh, that this that uh, this needs to be minimized. There are specific technical aspects that need to be properly studied uh, and planned before such a procedure is undertaken. Now, are you letting your registry go on? What are you hoping to do in the next few years as well, you our goal get is more people? To, our goal is to continue to follow patients at these 11 sites and potentially invite more sites. So if there are people out there that are watching this interview and would like to contribute, uh, uh, to this registry. We would very much welcome that. My um, address is mentioned in the manuscript, and we would be delighted to include their patients as we learn further. And that manuscript, as we said, is coming up in the March 1st issue of JAX. So please take a look at the paper, the accompanying editorial comment, and for Cardio Source World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.